Good morning, saints of God. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Master Jesus, we bless you this morning. Jehovah, we lift up high your name and we give you all the glory, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you for this beautiful day the Lord you have created just to bless us, O oh God. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, thank you for your comfort with us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, with your presence with us. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Father, we continue to bless you. We continue to give you all the glory and praise this morning. Lord, even as we have come before your holy table, Jesus Christ, this is the altar of God. We invite you to come and take over this morning. Jesus Christ, come and take over this morning devotion. Holy Spirit, come and take over this, this morning devotion. Jehovah God Almighty, come and take over this morning devotion. Father, we have come to receive the bread of life. We have come to receive the living bread, the bread from heaven. Father, nourish us this morning, O oh God. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll go into our time of worship.
Lifting our hands to you Here we are Giving you thanks For all you do And as we pray And worship your whole us when we call, for arms that lift us when we call, oh, oh you have always been right beside us, leading us all along the way, and we made it through, because of you. our hands to you. Here we are, giving you thanks for all you do. And as we praise and worship your whole Days we cannot see. For days we cannot see. For all that's yet to be. So much is yet to be. The trials we may have to face. When we'll be leaning on your grace. Oh yes. It will be your strength. Yes, it will. That saves us. Your love that makes us strong.
Amen. Amen. We thank God for this morning. Thank God for the time of worship. We'll go to our time of prayer. We'll go to our time of prayer. And Elder Uchena will be leading us in our time of prayer. Pastor Jesus, take over Uchena. is not here. All right. Um, All right, well, our food, this morning will be our, our prayers will be focused on healing and deliverance. Healing and deliverance. And our first prayer is let us give God thanks for all the healings and deliverances that we have enjoyed on this platform. Let us pray. Father, this morning we we'll lift up high your name and we worship you. We thank you, O oh Spirit of the living God. That Father, we thank you for all the healings and deliverances that we have enjoyed on this platform. Father, we will not take your blessings kindly, but Lord, we want to take the time to appreciate you, to thank you, to bless you, to give you all the glory, oh Lord, for all the healings and deliverances that we have received on this platform. Your word says, I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Oh, Father, this morning we say, Jehovah, thank you for all the healings and deliverances that we have enjoyed on this platform. Blessed be your name. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now our prayer number two. We said, Father, by the blood of Jesus, wash me clean again, washing away every debris of sin and iniquity, taking away the consequences thereof in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, this morning we're blessed and we worship you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise of God. We said, Father, this morning, we thank you by the blood of Jesus. Wash me clean again, O oh Lord. Wash away every debris of sin and iniquity, taking away their consequences thereof in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, our God, Father, by the blood of Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, wash me a clean, O oh God. Wash away every debris of sin and iniquities, take, taking away the consequences thereof in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your word says, as for thee also, by the blood, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent for thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Oh, Lord, this morning we pray with God. Father, by the blood of Jesus, wash me a clean, O oh God, again, washing away every debris of sin and iniquity taking away the consequences thereof in Jesus' name. So that I, I will cleanse them from all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. Oh, Father, this morning we pray with God, Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash me a clean again. Wash away every debris of sin and iniquity. Yes, taking away the consequences from my life. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now we go to our prayer number three. We said, Father, let there be continuous waves of healing, deliverances, and 
and restoration of health among us on this platform in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Oh, Father, let there be continuous waves of healings, deliverances, restorations of health among us on this platform. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the God. Oh, Father, your word says his flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyed. Father, this morning, oh God, let there be continuous waves of healing and restorations of health among us on this platform in Jesus' name. Father, we know, oh God, that we have come all to the table of God, the altar of God, the breakfast table of God, to eat the daily bread of God, that daily bread that heals us to God, the bread from heaven that heals us. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. My flesh is truly food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Jesus Christ, as we have come onto your holy table this morning, let there be continuous waves of healing, deliverance and restorations of health amongst us on this platform. You said, I will renew their youthfulness like the eagle. Father, renew our youthfulness of God. Renew our youthfulness of God. Renew our youthfulness of God. Heal us, restore us. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. Now we go to our prayer number four. We said, Father, let every contention of hell against the health of any member of this platform and our immediate family members be broken in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, let every, every contention of hell against the health of any member of this platform and our immediate family members be broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we pray to you this morning, oh God. Jehovah, rise up on our behalf, oh God. Father, by your hand, Lord, let every contention of hell against the health of any member on this platform and our immediate family be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, your word says, but thou seest the Lord God, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey, and the prey, and the prey, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contenders with thee, and I will save their children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweat wine. And I and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, I am thy Savior, thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Oh, Father, let every contention of hell against the health of any member on this platform, oh God, and our immediate family members be broken in Jesus' name. Father Jehovah God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, let every contention of hell against the health of any member on this platform and our immediate family members be broken in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, our prayer number five. We said, Father, as you have promised in your word, bring us health and cure continuously at every of our gatherings on this platform and let every disease afflicting any of us or our immediate family members be terminated in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us pray. Oh, Father God Almighty, the God of Israel, Father, as you have promised in your word, bring us health and cure continually at every of our gatherings on this platform and let every disease afflicting any of us or our immediate family members be terminated in the name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, your word says, behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and I will cure them. Mama, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Father, this morning, oh God, we ask that as you have promised in your word, 
bring us health and cure continuously at every of our gatherings on this platform and let every disease afflicting us be terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus, uh, Father, Lord, uh, we are asking again, as you have promised in your word, bring us health and cure continuously at every of our gatherings on this platform and let every disease afflicting any of us or our immediate family members be terminated uh, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we worship you. You said, I will restore health unto them, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they call thee an altar, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh. Father, this morning, O God, by your mighty hand, O God, Lord, bring us health and cure. Continuously, let every of our gatherings on this platform, and let every disease afflicting any of us, and our family members be terminated. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, our prayer number six. We said, Father, by your hand, divinely touch everyone on this platform and our immediate family members. And by this, let every discomfort, sickness, disease leave our bodies right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray. Oh, Father God Almighty, Jehovah, this morning by your hand, O God, divinely touch everyone on this platform and our immediate family members. And by this, let every discomfort, sickness, and disease leave our bodies right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Oh, Father, we give you all that glory, O God. We thank you, O God. Father, we give you all the glory, O God. We thank you, O Lord. Yes, sir, for the healing of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, our prayer number seven. We said, Father, let whatever grave hold in anyone on this platform or our immediate family members in bondage be open today for total release, for total release in Jesus' name. Yes, let us pray. Father, let whatsoever gray, whatever grave holding anyone on this platform or our immediate family members in bondage be open today for total release in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, rise up, oh God. Rise up on our behalf, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, let whatever grave holding anyone on this platform or our immediate family members in bondage be open today for total release in the name of Jesus Christ. Your wife says in Ezekiel 37, 12, therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O oh my people, I will open your grave and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord whom I have opened your grave. Oh, my people, and oh, my people, and brought you out of your grave. Father, you are the God that brings the dead out of their grace of God. Today, Father, let whatever grave holding anyone on this platform or our immediate family members in bondage be open today for their total release. In the name of Jesus, oh, Father, we again, O oh God, this morning, let whatever grave holding anyone on this platform or our immediate family members in bondage be open today for total release in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for answered prayers. It is time for our Bible reading. It is time for our Bible reading. We'll be reading from 1 Samuel 30, from verse 1 to 8. 1 Samuel chapter 30, from verse 1 to 8. And Sister Winifred will read for us. Good morning. 
1 Samuel 30, 1 to 8. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Three, so David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelites. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Seven, and David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's sons, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after the truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Amen. 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 It is time to receive the word of God from the man of God who is full of the spirit of God and the word of God. This morning, we are privileged to have our own Pastor Ernest to bring the word of God to us. Pastor Ernest, welcome. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for another privilege and opportunity to be in his presence. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning, we're going on a journey uh, titled Pursuing the Promises of God. Hallelujah. Wednesday, we talked about the promises of God. And uh, we'll look at pursuing the promises of God. And we all understand and know the word pursue is an active word. That means to go after. Hallelujah. And we read on Wednesday in the book of 2 Peter 1, 4. It says, whereby are given unto us, talking about the believers, exceeding great and precious promises. So God has bestowed upon each and every one of us in the kingdom of God, exceeding great and precious promises. Why has he bestowed such promises on us? That by these, ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. So to walk or to walk in heaven here on earth, it takes the promises of God to actualize them. And so having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So God has exceeding great and precious promises available for you and I. So that we might be partakers of the nature, the divine nature, the heavenly nature here on earth. And the scripture that we just read in verse 8. It says, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely. There's no doubt about that. Thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Hallelujah. So pursuing the promises of God. So this morning as children of God, of the kingdom of God, we have the authority, we have the mandate to pursue and overtake and recover. Pursue and overtake and recover. Anything that we find in the, in the Bible, because anything, all the promises in the Bible, they are ours. So anything that is ours, anything that is yours in the Bible this morning, God is telling you and I to pursue it, to pursue it to pursue it. 
But then we must also understand that a hunter must be skilled in his trade if he is to return home with his prey. The hunter must have the know-how and the necessary skill if he's supposed to return home with his prey or harvest. It is the same to go on a hand to pursue the promises of God. We must learn the know-how. We must acquire the know-how before we can pursue the promises of God. You don't pursue the promises of God by just singing and celebrating it. There is a know-how to bring it to pass in your life. Paul said that grace was given to me to be a wise master builder. A wise master builder. That means the craftiness, how to go about of building, of actualizing, it was given to him. So it's the same way that we must have what the know-how. We must learn the know-how. We see from the book of Ephesians 1, 3, say that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Like we just read in 2 uh, Peter as well. We have been blessed. It's made available, meaning that each believer is positioned and has the potential to bring the blessings from the spiritual realm into manifestations in the physical. Because we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms, but you have to bring, because you don't leave. We live in a physical world. We have to bring it into its actualization so that you can be a partaker of that divine nature here on earth, not in heaven. So that is how, that is why we must learn the know-how. So this morning, let's go through how do I obtain or pursue the promises? How do I obtain or pursue the promises of God? <coughs> Excuse me. First, we must locate the promise you are believing God for in the word. You must locate the promise you are believing God for in the word. Not someone locating the promise for you yourself, locating the promise you are believing God for in the word. We see from the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 14, it says, The sower soweth the word. It is the same way where you have a farmer who wants to harvest apple, mangoes, or whatever. The first thing he needs is the seed. He must locate the seed for that apple that he's trying to harvest, for that mangoes, tomatoes, anything that he's trying to harvest, he must locate the seed because without the seed, there will be no harvest. So we must locate the promise you are believing God for in the word. And the word of God is the incorruptible seed. It's the incorruptible seed. The promises of God are in a seed form, which is the word. So every promise of God in the Bible that we read is in a seed form. There has to be a planting. There has to be a finding that seed. There has to be a planting. There has to be a watering. There's a long process with it. So we must locate the word obtaining to the promise we are pursuing and then sow it in our heart. Sow the word in our heart. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Thy word is settled. That means there is no two ways that if you find the word of God, if you find the promise of God, which is in his word, it is settled forever and ever. The seed, the seed of an apple, an apple seed or orange seed, has many oranges, multitudes on that is settled. It depends on how you plant it. It depends on what you do after planting. It depends on the soil on which you plant it. So that is why the word is settled forever. There are conditions that can make that word prosperous, that can make that seed grow, and there are other conditions that will not make it grow. So that's why you obtain, you find that seed, and you sow it in your heart in your heart, the soil, 
That's a key determining factor, which is your heart. So God's word will always come to pass, will always come to pass. It will always come to, will always find its expression because God is always constant. There's no variableness with him. Remember he told Elijah, I have commanded a widow to feed and sustain you. So begin that journey. Now we didn't read in the Bible where God was speaking to that lady, that widow, that, hey, my prophet is coming around. Uh, he's coming to your house. But the blah, when you see him obey his word, no. He said, I've commanded a widow in Israel to feed you and sustain you. Now when Elijah walked into that town, into that city, he saw the first widow he saw, he went to that person. Now, if that widow did not obey, did not show the word of God that the prophet spoke, the promise, the blessings will not come to find its way in that widow's life. If that widow had disobeyed the prophet and said, hey, I don't have anything, go your way, there will still be another widow. Because God's word will always come to pass. The only variableness is ours. So you must locate that word, the promise, which is in the word. In the book of Psalm 89, 34, God says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing which has gone out of my lips. So his word is what? words he has spoken out of his lips. He said he will not break, he will not alter it. So that's a surety for us. That God's word will always come to pass. So first we must locate the promise you are believing God in. You must locate it first. If it's not in the word, you can't stand on it. If it's not in the word, God is not moved to perform it. So that's why you locate the promise you are believing God for in the word. Now, number two, we'll probably stop over here and continue another time. Believe. After locating the word, the promise, believe. Jesus said in Matthew 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. A anyone who believes all things are possible to him that believe it. That means believing makes you walk in the realm of the supernatural. Because in another place, he said, for with God, all things are possible. So when you believe, then everything is possible to you. Now, the word believe is to become convinced. And that settles it. To become convinced. If you are not convinced yet about that word, about that promise, you can't believe it. Bible says you can have whatsoever that you say, whatsoever that you say. So believing is of the heart. With the heart, man believe it. That is what the scripture says. So believing is of the heart, not the head. Believing is of the heart. So believe that the promise you have located in the word is the truth is the truth one thing we need to understand is that believing is having confidence in the word and your confidence level is based on your intimacy with god see when you know the person speaking you have confidence in their word when you know the person speaking there are certain people who when they speak when you hear when they speak a word to you Regardless of how impossible that thing is, you believe it because you have that intimacy with them. You have that relationship with them. You know them inside out so you can stand on their word. So believing is having confidence. Our confidence is based on our intimacy, your knowledge of God. Not knowing about him, but knowing him. That is where your confidence comes in. So believe, believe. Jesus said, because of your own belief, for verily I say unto you, if you have paid as a grain of the master, so ye shall say unto this mountain, 
Remove hands to yonder place and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. So this morning I'll end over here, hallelujah. Another time we'll go through all the other steps. But remember that first, you must learn how. The know-how of bringing those promises into your life. See, the man that wanders out of the way of understanding abides in the congregation of the dead. That means nothing is profitable, nothing will be fruitful because you lack that understanding of how to bring it to pass. So first, we must locate the promise in the word. He told uh, uh, concerning Joseph, I said, until the time came, for the word that he believed until that time came, that word tried it. So there's a word that you must always stand on. There was a word that you must find concerning that promise, concerning that area of your life that you will stand on. You must locate it first. And when you locate it, then you must believe. Believe in that word. And believe is based on confidence. Believe is convinced, being convinced. That is why we read from scriptures that Abraham was fully persuaded. That means he was convinced beyond doubt. So if you are convinced, there is no doubt. So this morning, let's take those two, these two steps, and then another time we'll continue from there. Amen. Amen. We thank God. It is time for now to go before the Lord in our personal time of prayer. Um, let us go before the Lord in our personal time of prayer.
and without doubt, thou shalt recover. That means you must pursue to recover. A bishop will say, if you wait, you waste. You can't just be waiting and watching that, okay, it's going to come. You must pursue to recover. Because faith is a fight. But we have an assurance. That's as we do, we will recover. And I know you've gone before the Lord this morning, taking control of that which belongs to you. So without doubt, you will recover. It's not even that he said, without doubt, you shall recover all. That means God don't want you to suffer losses of any kind. You will not suffer losses of any kind in the name of Jesus. Many people thought because you lost it, then you have lost it. <laughs> like it was with Joseph. Oh, was good? look at him now. That's what they say. Then she was going to become of his visions now. They thought he has lost it. But in God, you'd never lose. No, no. In God, he will put laughter in your mouth. And cause that of your enemies to cease. Make your mockers liars. 
Yes, they thought he lost. <laughs> but he kept pursuing in faith. He kept pressing by faith. And then they discovered he never lost. You will not lose. The enemy thought he has taken it from you, but I'm telling you this morning, you cannot lose. So you will not lose. The recovery of God always takes us beyond where we were. And you are going beyond where you are. You are having more than the enemy thought you could. What was taken from you, stolen from you, forcefully taken from you, like Isaiah said, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the Lord who captive delivered? And I will. I will take it from you. I will deliver you. I will contend with them that contend with you. Because in God, you would never lose. While your enemy thought they are celebrating your losses, God is laughing. He said, He that dwells in heaven shall laugh. He's laughing at your enemies right now. Because he knows you have lost nothing. He said, without doubt, you shall recover all. So you, while your enemy is laughing that you have lost, you start celebrating your recovery. Because in God, you'd never lose. I'm persuaded this morning that the forces of recovery are already released in your favor. So pursue to gather. Force you to pick them up. Force you to get them back into your bands. Because in God, keep that word, you never lose. However it appears, you never lose. Let those mocking, laughing at you, out there to humiliate you. The day of reckoning. Let them know that the day of reckoning is here. Because in God, you never lose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why mourn? Why? Is your God dead? <laughs> I just had that to my spirit. I'm sure there's somebody mourning there now wondering, it's, it's just too much. I can't, it's just over. No, your God is not dead. He's never over with it. Never. <laughs> Those who know him don't give up on him. He said, who again so believed in hope, he says, continually giving glory to God because he knows it's never over. And God made him to laugh. God will make you to laugh. It's never over with you in the name of Jesus. Go forth, and without doubt, you shall recover all. Hallelujah. Remember, this program runs Monday through Fridays. We'll be back on this platform. Uh, Monday morning. To keep celebrating the goodness of God, to, be, to keep enjoying the faithfulness of God. So let's keep inviting our friends and reminding them, and working on getting them into the presence of God every morning, and it's going to be great. It is well with you. Monday morning, 5 a.m., we'll be back again on this platform. Chicago people, remember, we have just two weeks to go, I believe, for our seminar. Uh, I, I trust you are inviting your friends, your colleagues, sending them the invite. And those of you who are not in Chicago, like I said, but you have friends and relatives and colleagues also in Chicago, please send them the invite, get them to be with us on the 1st and 2nd of July at the Double Tree by Hilton down there on Skokie Boulevard. It's the divine torch and it's going to change lives. We trust God for that. So go in peace this morning. Have a most fruitful weekend, a most prosperous one. Let the rest and the, the peace and the rest of God secure you on every side. And return back here Monday morning with the joy of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let us share the goodness together this morning. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord 